I'm Wayne the Boat Guy. In this video, we're going to take a look at this 1965 Evinrude Fisherman. We're going to look at all of its features, start it up, let it run, clean it up, and talk about why this is such a cool motor. Let's take a quick tour around this motor. These things are uh, pretty cool and pretty old and surprisingly there's still a lot of them around. The idea with these motors is they were meant to be a uh, motor for some smaller boats like a John boat for fishing and uh, for, uh, for as a uh, like an auxiliary motor I guess on, with, with, on a boat with a larger boat. So. Here's one of the cool things. First of all, it's called a fisherman. If you're new to boats or boat motors, what's really neat about these ones here is that they're quite simple and they're a really great place to start learning about boat things. Here's the controls on this motor. You have a choke, which you pull out to choke the motor. You have, this is your low speed mixture. My knob is missing for my low speed mixture. This is your starter cable like a lawnmower. And then your throttle speed is operated on the handle here. When I was learning about boats and boat motors and other kinds of things, something like a choke, people who are older, who've been around for a long time, they know what a choke is and what a choke does. But a lot of people who are younger, they don't know what a choke is and how you even use a choke. When do I use a choke when I'm starting an engine? How does it work? I'll explain a little bit about how a choke works and what the choke does on here in a little bit. So let's look at some other things on this motor. You've got this cool handle right here which helps steer the motor around. And you've got these mounts here. I'm missing the handle on this one over here. These are what tighten it up against the transom of your boat. I have it on my cool handy dandy uh, rolling motor mount. This is your shifter. So whenever you want to go forward you pull it one way, whenever you want to go backwards the other way, and middle is neutral. So on the back side of the engine you've got the, uh, the lock for the engine cover. And then in the lower parts of the motor You've got, uh, this is the part that comes down where the, uh, the shaft runs down to run the propeller, and this is all very, very dirty right now. So there's our prop. Here's your water inlet right here. That's where the fresh water comes in. Your exhaust comes out down here. And your lower unit oil. So right above where this intake is, you see there's a, there's a screw right there. That's where oil, let your oil level, and then your oil drain is down here in the bottom. So we'll actually be changing the oil on this too. And let's take a look under the hood now. Release that, and there's this handle here, and you just pop the cover off. The Fisherman's six horsepower motor is a two-cylinder, two-stroke engine. Car engines and a lot of other larger engines are four-stroke engines. A lot of newer boat engines are four-stroke engines. There's a lot of technical things about a difference between a two-stroke and a four-stroke engine. Essentially, why it's called strokes is because a four-stroke engine, the piston has to go up and down four times to complete a cycle. And a two-stroke, the piston only goes up and down twice to complete a cycle. Most important thing to know is if you have a two-stroke motor, you're mixing your oil with your gas. If you have a four-stroke motor, you're not mixing your oil with your gas. That's the rule of thumb. So if somebody says, oh yes, I've got a nice two-stroke boat motor, it doesn't have an oil filter on it, and it doesn't have an oil dipstick or an oil tank. The oil, the lubrication of the engine, actually happens with oil running through with the gasoline. And a four-stroke motor has an oil filter and a dipstick and actually separate oiling for the engine. Let's take a look at some other things about this particular motor here. Let me spin it back around to get into the light. 
So with the hood open, this area here, this is your carburetor. Car what the carburetor does is it mixes your air with your fuel. The choke control that we saw earlier right here, as you see, it operates a lever right there. What that lever is, I don't know if you can see it or not, do you see something opening and closing right down in here? What that is, is uh, it's a flap. When you're first starting it up, when that, if you have that flap all the way open, it lets in a lot of air, and then the fuel comes in back here. There's my fuel line coming in. That's where the fuel comes into the carburetor. So air comes in, goes with the fuel, goes into the engine. What the choke does is the choke blocks off some of the air. Not all of it, but a lot of it, so that way more fuel is going into the engine, and that helps them with starting. That's what a choke does. So it's thinking of it of like sort of, I don't want to say think of it like as choking a person, but I guess in a way it is kind of like that. So it chokes off the air, allows more fuel in, and that's what helps with starting. And then once you've started, like if you have the choke pulled out, and you get it started. Once it's started, then you can back the choke back in again. And then once it's warmed up, you can put the choke all the way off. If you go to push the choke all the way off, and the engine goes to stall out, you pull the choke back out a little bit. So you can have the choke all the way out, partial, or all the way in. This is your mechanical starter. So you've got this flywheel here, which has your points, your electronic things that control the sparking, are underneath of here. Magnetos and things like that. And this is the gear that connects to that. So as you go to pull the starter cable, as you see, the gear pops up. So I pull the starter cable, and that gear pops up and engages, and that's how you start one of these. Your fuel connection on this is down here on the front. So this is where your fuel hose clips in, and it runs through this black line up to your fuel pump. The fuel pump operates off of vacuum off of the engine, and it runs it through a little filter screen in there, and then it comes out. On this motor, it's through this clear hose into the carburetor. And then over here, you got your two spark plugs. We can pull them out and do a compression test. So we can make sure that they're getting spark. And then over here is some of your throttle control linkages that hook up underneath of here and then through that area. And then inside of there is your pistons and your, you know, everything else that works <laughs> inside of the motor. So some of the things I did with this motor when I first got it was I replaced this, uh, rebuilt, replaced this fuel pump. I rebuilt the carburetor and I did a compression test, uh, cleaned the plugs, put in new, underneath of here, uh, is where new points, condensers are. So all that is accessed underneath of this flywheel and I replaced all those. And then I also got a new gas tank for it. Here's my new gas tank I've gotten for it. So I bought a new tank and a new hose. And here's where it connects onto the motor right here. After finding that fuel was leaking out of here and rebuilding that, and rebuilding the carburetor, getting spark, checking everything else, and it still wouldn't run, what I realized is I had water in my fuel. And that was the biggest problem, was my old tank actually leaked and had gotten a lot of water in it. So... That's what was causing it not to run. One of the cool things I purchased when I got my uh, Evinrude is I got the 1965 Evinrude Service Manual. This is an original printing. I got this on eBay. It's for the uh, six horsepower Evinrude, and it covers models 6502 and 6503. For anybody who cares, the difference between a 6502 and a 6503 so one has a 15-inch transom and one has a 20-inch transom. Now, as I mentioned before, my boat knowledge is pretty limited. But, I don't know if you can see here, but on my model plate, mine is a 6502. And I don't know if that length applies to this or if it applies to where it mounts on the transom. If anybody knows the correct answer to that, please feel free to share that. The real cool thing about this book is that 
it includes a whole lot of great information. So it has specifications, clearance charts, torque charts. It has a staple. The staples are all rusted out of it, but it talks about how to work on the magneto, adjusting the points, uh, you know, everything from you know, reassembly of the gear case, uh, you know, how the impeller should look. Uh, there are some things in here that are very specific where you have to have specific kind of Evinrude tools, but it does give you a good working knowledge and basic understanding of some of the maintenance and service work that would get done with one of these. tub underneath of here so that way when I go to run the motor the motors under the water like it should be my intake is right there so I'm gonna have to get the tub pretty full or raise it up a little bit higher maybe I'll try to raise it up a little bit higher So the water's got to be above those little metal intakes right there, the chrome, the silvery looking intakes. The water level has to be above that in order to uh, sufficiently cool the motor. So we'll wait for that to fill up. Okay, so we got our tank filled up with water. It's full to cover, so let the cool, that would be cool. Now we're going to put our fuel our fuel up. <clears throat> you have to mix oil in with your gas because it's a two-stroke engine. And these are like a quick connect thing that hooks on right here. So we connect that. The next thing we do is we pump it up. So we're squeezing the little fuel bolt fuel ball bulb thing to pump it up. All right, so we've got the lower unit of the motor in the water, so that way water's cooling and it doesn't mess up the impeller. We've got the fuel line hooked up. We pumped it up with a little ball on there. Next we do for the starting procedure, make sure it's in neutral. So we got forward, reverse, right. so neutral. Pull out the choke, which closes up the carburetor. Put this to start, and then give it a pull. So I can smell gas, so we know it's it's getting fuel. I'm gonna push the choke in just a little bit. Give it a couple more pulls. Now this motor's been sitting for a while, so it might not want to start. If it doesn't start, then we bring out the engine starting fluid. So you take your cover off. Open the choke up, spray some in the carburetor, and start, close the choke up.
pump a little bit more gas. grips on here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to restart it now without starting fluid and uh, see if we can adjust the idle to get it idle even slower. I got an idle down pretty low. I'd love to have it just sort of go on put, 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 put if I can. So that's what I'm going for. So let me show you some close-ups of some of the things I did when I went to get it running. 
So whenever I went to put in the starting fluid, what I did is I squirted it right in here. This is the carburetor on the front of the, on the front of the engine. This is that rod that I've been adjusting. And right below here, you can see when I open and close the choke, I think. That's the carburetor. So what you do is if you have the choke closed off, it blocks it. So I opened it up and I sprayed just down into this area here and then I closed it back off again. When I was pumping fuel, first of all you want to make sure you've got enough fuel in your tank. As you can see I have just under half a tank and it's mixed correctly with the, with the two-stroke oil and then this is the pump bulb. What you do is you pump it up till you start to feel tension in it. So what I was doing is I was squeezing it and at first it would go squish, squish, and about the third, fourth squeeze you'd feel it kind of get tight. That's how you know you've got fuel pressure because you're mechanically pushing pressure up into into the fuel pump up here coming into the engine. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little tour of the Evan Rood 6 horsepower Fisherman. And I hope that you learned something from this video. When I was starting out working with this, I could not find any videos on YouTube that showed how to operate, how to start this motor and, 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 and get it working. There are some great YouTubers out there who put together videos about how to repair this. Uh, for them, example, things like putting points in, uh, the, the fuel pump, and those types of things. And as you saw, my water was very, very milky looking, and that's oil. And that's oil leaking out of the lower unit on this. Uh, and I went looking to see if uh, I should put together a video of how I rebuilt the lower unit. But there's other people out there who have much better videos than I could put together of that because they actually know about boats and motors. They're not new to it like I am. But if you ever go to buy one of these, uh, that's definitely something to be looking for. If you go to run it and there's a lot of oil in the water, uh, that means that the lower unit is leaking oil. And that's something that has to be repaired with some seals and everything like that put in there. And if you go to look at a video for how to do that, it's a little bit tricky. You need some specialized tools. It's not something where it's just a matter of putting a gasket in. Um, I'll also show some of the tools that I used whenever I was testing this motor out. One of the tools I used was this compression tester. And the way you use this is you undo the spark plug, you screw this into the, where the spark plug goes, you give it some pulls, and it will tell you what the compression is on that cylinder. And there's specs out there and information in forms that tell you ideally what the compression should be. And really what you want to do is make sure that both cylinders are also pretty close in spec. Uh, another tool I used is the, uh, this is the case for it. It's a uh, ignition spark tester, and what this does is this allows you to see the spark whenever you're uh, pulling, so that way you can tell whether or not the points are working and there's a spark getting to the spark plug. Uh, that's very important to know too, because that way you know that you got compression, you got spark, because the three things you need is a spark, fuel, and compression, and then it should run. And so if you got good clean fuel, you got a spark, and you got some compression, a motor should work unless it's literally broken. Uh, so anyway, hope you found this educational. Please subscribe. I'm going to be putting together more videos with all different kinds of boat things as I'm learning stuff and playing around with this. And I still haven't decided what I'm going to do with this motor yet. Am I going to get another small boat to put it on? Am I going to keep it as a spare backup motor for my boat? Or do we part ways? Not really sure. If you have any ideas, you can put it in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. You have a choke, choke the motor. Something like a choke, choke is and what a choke does. They don't know what a choke, you even use a choke. Do I use a choke about how a choke, a choke does on here? The choke, what the choke does is the choke, that's what a choke does, is choking a person, chokes off the air. If you have the choke pulled out and you get the choke back in again, you can put the choke all the way off. Choke all the way off, pull the choke back out a little bit. The choke all the way out, 